Welcome back to the lecture series on transmission and distribution. So, in the previous session, we had uh, seen the model for short transmission lines. So, in that model, we do not consider the capacitance of the line. And we saw that we got fairly approximate results which were very good. And we saw how to calculate the regulation and transmission efficiency. Now, before we move on to models where we include the capacitance, uh, I want to talk to you about what is called as the Ferranti effect. So, if you know about this, then you will be able to relate to the models with capacitance and uh, appreciate why it is necessary to include the capacitance of the transmission line and in what way it changes the scenario from what we discussed with short line models. Okay, fine. So, now I will draw a small section of a line and we will see how we can understand Ferranti effect. So, I have the receiving end voltage and the sending end voltage. So, as we discussed R, L, C are all distributed parameters. So, to explain to you the phenomenon, I have just lumped it in sections. This is called as sectionalizing of the line. So, maybe this is 50 kilometers, 50 kilometers, 50 kilometers. It could be a long line just to illustrate the idea. Then here, I have the receiving end current. And let us assume I am taking equal segments. So, let us assume all these are C. Okay. So, let us say I have two nodes here. This voltage is V1 and this voltage is V2. So, I have introduced node 2 and node 1, node 2 and node 1 and this current let me call it as IC1 and this current as IC2, IC2 okay. and I will call this current as I1 and this is my sending end current. Okay. So, we just briefly saw that you can represent lines as pi sections or t sections. So, I have put two of them in series, assuming it is a long line I have broken up. So, this model can help you understand about what I am going to talk to and what is this phenomenon called as the Ferranti effect. So, let us be very clear about this circuit. This is a circuit representation of a line with three sections. Okay. So, now I have R and X, R and X, R and X, all equal sections I am assuming. Receiving end voltage is VR. I have modeled the capacitance of the line. So, since I have taken equal sections, the capacitance is CC. Again, this lumping is only an approximation, it is a distributed parameter. And we have Rx as the impedance in each of the sections and we have two nodes here V1, V2, IR, I1, Is. Clear? So, let me just write a few equations and then we will draw the phasor diagram and then you can understand what I am trying to do. So, firstly, assume Vr is the reference. I will assume V r is the reference and I assume I r is equal to 0. That means no load. 
So, I am not connecting any load at the receiving end, right? And therefore, I r is equal to 0. Now, if you take the short line model, I s also will be equal to 0 because in a short line model, I s is equal to I r because I have not modeled any shunt element there, no shunt capacitance. But when I model the capacitance, let us see what happens, okay. Now, by looking at the circuit, so I, I C 1 is equal to V 1 by X C 1, okay. X C 1 is same as X C because I have taken equal sections and what is V 1? V 1 if you see from the figure is V R plus I R into R plus J X. So, the receiving end voltage plus the drop here is equal to V 1, right, fine. Now, what is I 1? I 1, if I write Kirchhoff's current law at node 1, I 1 will be I R plus I C 1, I R plus I C 1. Next, I have I C 2 equal to V 2 by X C 2, V 2 by X C 2 and V 2 is equal to here, it will be V 1. plus V 1 plus I 1 into R plus J x. So, these are my equations, okay, very simple nodal equations from circuit theory. So, I have V r, then V 1 will be V r plus the drop here and this current will be V 1 by x c 1 that is x c and v 2 this voltage will be v 1 plus the drop in this section that is v 1 plus i 1 into r plus j x will be v 2 and the current here i c 2 will be v 2 by x c 2 and what will be i s? i s will be i 1 plus i c 2. So, I have all the equations, I have all the equations. Now, let us see something very interesting. Now, let us see something very interesting. So, I will start drawing the phasor diagram. I will start drawing the phasor diagram and what is important when you draw the phasor diagram? The reference, clear? So, in the previous problems we solved and in the phasor diagrams we drew, we took V r as the reference. So, let me take here also V r as the reference. Now, I have taken a condition of no load that means I r is equal to 0, right? I r is equal to 0. So, since I r is equal to 0, you do not have any drop in this section. The current here I r is 0. So, what do I get? V 1, V 1 will be equal to V r. V 1 will be equal to V r, right? So, V 1 will be equal to V r. So, I have this node voltage, the voltage of node 1. Now, what is I C 1? The current drawn by the capacitor. So, what is the direction of the current drawn by the capacitor? So, you know that in a capacitor, the current leads the voltage across the capacitor by 90 degrees, clear? Therefore, my I C 1 will be in this direction because I C 1 will lead V 1 by 90 degrees. I am not drawing to scale, I am just drawing the phasor diagram, that is all, clear? It is because we want to get some concept clear. Now, so, I C 1 
is leading V1 by 90 degrees and what is I1? I1 is IR plus IC1, IR is 0. So, this is also equal to I1. I1 is equal to IC1 because IR is equal to 0. Done. Now, what is the drop in the second section here? So, the drop in this resistor would be I1 into R and here it would be I1 into X. Now, what is the phasor relationship between the voltage drop in across a resistor and its current? So, we know that in a resistor, the drop is in phase with the current. Right. So, what is the current which is flowing through this? It is I1 which is equal to IC1. So, the drop there would be in phase with IC1 and what about X? You know that in the inductor, the voltage drop across the inductor leads the current through it by 90 degrees. So, what will be the drop through this? It will lead the current, the current is nothing but I1, it will lead the current by 90 degrees. So, this is I1 into X, got it? So, I have V1 in the first segment, the first node voltage is V1, then the drop in this R and X in this section will be I1 R and I1 X with in phase with the current I1 and leading I1 by 90 degrees. So, now what is Vr plus this drop? This is nothing but, you know, this is nothing but V2. This one, V2 is V1 plus the drop here, that is V2. Clear? Fine. Now, what would be the direction of the current drawn by this capacitor? I see 2. IC2 would lead the voltage across this that is V2 by 90 degrees. So, IC2 will lead voltage V2 by 90 degrees. I repeat, IC2 will lead voltage V2 by 90 degrees. So, this is V2. So, where would be IC2? IC2 would lead it by 90 degrees. IC2 is there. Okay. Now, I need to find out Vs. What would be Vs? Vs is V2 plus the drop here, plus the drop here, right? And for that, I need the current Is. What is the current Is? Ic2 plus I1. Ic2 plus I1. So, I have this is I1, this is I1, this is Ic2. So, This is Is, this is I1 plus Ic2, I1 plus Ic2. Now, let us come to the last part that is the drop here in this section of R and X. So, the drop in R would be in phase with Is, the drop in R would be in phase with Is. And the drop in X would lead it by 90 degrees. And so, this is Vs, this is V2. We are done. I have all the parameters I need. So, quickly let us recap how to draw. As I told you, do not memorize the phasor diagrams. You cannot memorize. You have to draw it logic. So, start with Vr. Vr is the reference and since I am assuming a no load, Ir is 0. Therefore, V1 is equal to Vr. Then the drop in the first section here between V2 and V1. So, the I1 R drop is in phase with I1 and I1 leads V1 by 90 degrees. So, I have I1 R and I have I1 X ahead of that leading the current by 90 degrees and so V R plus this drop will give me V 2. Okay? Now, 
Once you fix V2, you get the direction of IC2. IC2 will lead V2 by 90 degrees. Okay? And once you know IC2, IS is the sum of I1 plus IC2. So, this is I1 or I and then I have IC2, I get this. Okay? So, I now draw the drop in the last segment that is ISR, ISX, I get VS. Now, are you able to see what is happening? Are you able to see what is happening? VR is the receiving end voltage. Now, normally in the 2, 3 problems we solved, you saw that if VS was 133 kilo volts, VR was 132 kilo volts. So, we saw there is a voltage drop. And we drew the phasor diagrams also and from the phasor diagram also, you could see that there was a voltage drop, right? The magnitude of the voltage decreases as you move away from the source, right? But here what is happening, I have the receiving end voltage, then the next section before that V2 is greater than V1 and V, sorry, lesser than V1. And Vs is lesser than V2. So, if you consider more sections, what would you see? You would see that Vs is far, far lesser than Vr. Vs is lesser than Vr. And your sending end current is actually leading Vs. If you recollect the problems we solved, the sending end current was lagging Vs. Is was lagging Vs. But here what am I seeing? I am seeing Is leading Vs. And so, from this phasor diagram, you can understand two things. One is the sending end voltage magnitude is lesser than the receiving end voltage magnitude. Repeat, Vs is lesser than Vr. Okay? This is one change from the previous problems we solved. And second, Is leads Vs, whereas still now what we saw, Is lags Vs. But do not forget under what condition I drew the phasor diagram. Can you remember under what condition I drew the phasor diagram? No load. That is when IR is equal to 0. Okay. But the moment you load it, this is scenario changes because you know all the loads draw lagging currents. So, IR will be lagging and even though the capacitor draws, draws leading currents, the net current will be lagging and therefore, you will find that Vs in normal conditions, Vs is always greater than Vr. But under the special condition of no load, Vr is much greater than Vs. So, this was first observed by Ferranti and so it is called as Ferranti effect. So, if somebody asks you what is Ferranti effect, your answer would be the rise in the receiving end voltage over and above the sending end voltage under no load conditions. And if you are asked what is the reason for this, what would the answer be? The answer would be the charging currents drawn by the capacitance. Which capacitance? Have you put those capacitance? No. It is the capacitance of the line itself. Now, if you recollect our discussion on underground cables and overhead cables, you will remember that we told the underground cables the capacitance is very high. Therefore, in underground cables, this Ferranti effect will be more prominent and the rise in receiving and voltage can become dangerously high under no load conditions. Okay? So, if you remember this, then you will appreciate the next models we are going to see with capacitances. So, let us consider one more example. We have done quite a few numericals. So, here again I have a three phase line that delivers a load at 0.8 pf lag. The sending end and receiving end voltages are 139 kV and 131.8 kV respectively. 
So, you can see here that the sending end voltage is lesser because it is loaded, it is a loaded line. The impedance of the line is phi plus j 9 ohms per phase. So, determine the receiving end power factor, sending end power factor and the transmission efficiency. Clear? Okay. So, in all these problems we are seeing how to solve it different kinds of data, that is the whole idea. So, receiving end voltage is 131.8, you have to divide by root 3 because you need the line to neutral voltage. So, I get 76.095 kV and the sending end magnitude is 139. So, by root 3 I get 80.252 kV. Now, power factor is 0 0.8. Remember I told you the power factor specified is always the receiving end power factor. If you say the load, the load is always the receiving end load, the receiving end power. So, cos phi r is 0 0.8, r plus j x is phi plus j 9 ohms. Now, I have the approximate formula V s is equal to V r plus i r r cos phi r plus i r x sin phi r. So, you have V r, V s, we know V r is given, this is the data given and then I have r, I have cos phi r, I have x and I have sin phi r. So, the only unknown is I r, that is the receiving end current and you can calculate it. So, the receiving end current happens to be 442.23 amperes. So, now again I want you to pay attention to the numbers. Do you see you are dealing with transmission systems? So, you are getting current in hundreds of amperes in the problems you are solving. Whereas, in network theory, your current would have been 2 amperes, 5 amperes, 10 amperes, but here we have 100 amperes, 400 amperes. Okay. So, because we are de dealing with bulk power, large power transfers. So, now the receiving end power P r is equal to you know 3 V r I r cos phi r by 1000 kilowatts. Why 3? Why 3? Because V r I r cos phi r is single phase power. Okay? V r I r cos phi r is single phase power and this divide by 1000 is to convert it into kilowatts. So, do not wonder why ma'am is telling so much in detail because I know students just wonder suddenly where did this 1000 come up from because you do not pay attention to the units. Okay. So, I have 3 V r I r cos phi r by 1000 so many watt kilowatts. So, it is a large number you can represent it in megawatts. So, 1000 kilowatts is 1 megawatt. So, you get 80.76 megawatt receiving end power, receiving end power. So, same way I can calculate sending end power. So, sending end power I use this equation, you remember we wrote this equation for short line V s cos phi s plus V is equal to V r cos phi r plus I r into r. We drew this, wrote this from the phasor diagram. So, from this I can find out cos phi s, V r I know, V r cos phi r, I r, r divided by V s. So, I get 0 0.786 lag, the sending end power factor is 0 0.786 lag. So, you got the receiving end power factor and the sending end power factor. Next you have to compute the efficiency. So, percentage efficiency we know is P r by P r plus 3 i squared r. Again why this 3? Loss in 3 conductors, 3 lines. So, the total 3 phase line, the total 3 phase loss is the loss in all the 3 lines and we are dealing with phase quantities. So, 3 i squared r. So, receiving end power you have and this is the receiving end power 3 into i squared into r. Why did I put this 10 to the power of 3? Because it is in kilowatts. Whereas, i squared r when you do directly the unit will be watts. 
okay either you have to divide this by 1000 to convert it into kilowatts or you have to convert the kilowatts to watts so don't mix up the units i am repeatedly telling because it's very very important you keep track of the units otherwise you will get absurd answers absurd answers okay into 100 so i get this i get 96.49% again look at the high efficiency So, I told you when you are calculating if you get low efficiency some 60 percent, 65 percent means somewhere you have gone wrong either with the units or some calculation or something. So, the efficiency is always around 95 and above, okay? fine. So, now let us take up the next objective which is Ferranti effect which I have already explained to you what it is and then how do I model the medium transmission line. I use the how do I model it using the nominal T model. So, this is the story of what we discussed. S. Z. Ferranti in 1980, he discovered that in long transmission lines, the magnitude of the receiving end voltage can be greater than the sending end voltage. It was an observation he made, that is why it is called as a discovery, not an invention. He did not invent it, it is there already. So, this phenomenon is named after him and called the Ferranti effect. So, this occurs when the distributed capacitance of the line draws a leading current greater than that drawn by the load. So, not only under no load, but even under light load, light load means when the magnitude of the current is small, when the magnitude of the receiving end current is small compared to the charging currents also you can observe the Ferranti effect. So, this capacitor charging current causes a voltage drop in the line inductance which will be in phase with the sending end voltage subsequently making the receiving end voltage greater than the sending end voltage. So, this can damage loads at the receiving ends because you will be getting much higher voltages. So, we had already drawn more in detail. Anyway, here there is just one section. So, whereas I drew with three sections and explained to you. So, you have Vr and the capacitance draws a leading current and this is the drop in the resistor and this is the drop in the inductor. So, you can see Vs is less than Vr. So, longer the line, longer the line, more prominent will be this effect. Longer the line, more prominent will be this effect. Okay. Now, how do I reduce Ferranti effect? So, the rise in the voltage is proportional to the square of the length of the line. That is why in the short lines we do not have the risk. So, we do not even model the capacitance in short lines. Now, what is the cause for this Ferranti effect? Let us go to the previous. What is the cause for this Ferranti effect? It is a charging current of the capacitance. It is not an externally added capacitor, please keep that in your mind. It is not an externally added capacitor. Okay? It is the capacitance of the line, so you cannot avoid it. it you cannot avoid it, it will be there. Right? So, what should I do? I should try to compensate for this leading current. This is the culprit. I should try to compensate for this leading current. So, how will you compensate a leading current by putting a lagging current. So, what I do supposing I connect an inductor here, a reactor and this will draw let us say a current I L, it draws a current I L. Okay. So, you know the inductor current lags the voltage, the current through the inductor lags the voltage by 90 degrees. So, what will happen this I L? will be here. Remember it is still no load, no IR that is why I have not even shown IR, IR, IR is 0. So, what will happen? The net leading current will reduce. So, V s will improve, the drops will reduce. So, V s will improve. Now, if I make this exactly equal to this and cancel 
then what will happen? This there won't be any drops, so V s will become equal to V r. If I make it exactly equal, that is the current drawn by the reactor exactly equal to the current drawn by the capacitance of the line. So, this is one way of reducing the Ferranti effect. So, what is the answer? Ferranti effect can be reduced by connecting reactors at the receiving end. Repeat, Ferranti effect can be reduced by connecting reactors at the receiving end. Clear? Fine. So, my system is under no load because the voltage of the receiving end is going to rise, I am going to put a reactor there, reactor draws a lagging current. Now, do you operate the system under no load condition all the time or light load? No, most of the time the system is loaded. So, when it loads, what is going to happen? When it loads, what is going to happen? It will draw a large receiving end current which is lagging. Got the point? When the system gets loaded, I told you all the loads are lagging loads. So, it will draw a heavy lagging current and compared to that, the charging current is very small. Charging current is only because of the capacitance of the line. So, it won't be very high, whereas load currents will be very high because you are going to connect megawatts of loads. Now, you already have a lagging current which is going to cause what drop in the line. Over and above that you have connected one extra reactor which will also be drawing lagging current. So, what happens? Your receiving in voltage will be very poor. Poor means because of this shunt reactor you have connected, the receiving voltage will be lesser when you load than what it is without the reactor. Okay. So, let us get our premise very clear. Let me take the first simple case where the shunt capacitance is neglected. Clear? Shunt capacitance is neglected. Short lines, it is fine. And then what happens? The receiving end voltage is always less than the sending end voltage because receiving end will draw a lagging current. Second case, I model the shunt capacitance and the system is loaded. No problem. Even under this condition, the load lagging current will be much larger than the leading charging current. So, even now receiving end voltage will be less than sending end voltage. Third case, the load is removed totally, it is no load. So, I do not have any lagging current, only leading current because of the capacitance of the line. Then Ferranti effect comes into effect and receiving end voltage will be greater than the sending end voltage. Case number 4, receiving end voltage is greater, so I connect a reactor to compensate for the leading current of the capacitance, line capacitance. So, this will reduce the rise in the receiving end voltage, good. Fifth case, I leave this reactor on and load the system. Now, I have a small leading charging current, I have a large lagging load current and also a lagging reactor current. So, my receiving and voltage will drop more than the first case where there is no capacitance, no reactor. Clear? So, you see now you are in a fix. You need the reactor for light load or no load and you do not need the reactor for heavy load, simple. That is the story in short. Therefore, the rise in the receiving end voltage can be compensated by connecting shunt reactors which absorb reactive power, capacitors generate reactive power. So, these reactors must be switched off, very important, this is very important. They must be switched off when the receiving end is loaded. If you do not do it, then the receiving end voltage can be very poor, regulation can be very poor. 
for line greater than 400 kilometers shunt reactants reactors have to be connected even in intermediate points middle of the line. Remember the sections of lines I drew to show you the Ferranti effect. So, it is not enough if you just put a reactor at the receiving end alone you may have to put it at some intermediate substations also. Okay. For underground cables compensation is needed at intervals of 15 to 20 kilometers just see how small why because the capacitance of the underground cable is very high. So, they will they will draw high charging currents there is so much of drawback because of this the cable gets heated up and the receiving end voltage will be greater. So, you may have to put re reactors and do not forget to switch off the reactors when you load the system that is very important. So, that is a brief about uh, uh, Ferranti effect. Now, let us go to modeling of a medium transmission line. So, that is between 80 to 250 kilometers that is called as a medium transmission line. So, in a short line we saw that we neglected the line capacitance and for a medium line I have to consider it. So, what am I doing by modeling the capacitance of the line? I am considering the charging current of the capacitance. I am taking into account the charging current of the line capacitance. So, we saw in the first discussion on this topic of modeling that you can model using either the nominal T model or the nominal phi model. So, let us look at the T model first. This is the T model. So, what do I do in the T model? The impedance of the line half of it I have split on either side the impedance of the line is split. You have a capacitor connected in the middle not capacitor connected it is the model of the line capacitance repeat again and again and again. These are not external capacitors it is the model of the line capacitance. If you look at the transmission line you can see the line conductor you can see this you cannot see the capacitance, but a capacitance exists because you have dielectric air in between and this is a conductor. So, you will have capacitance. Okay. So, this capacitance is the model of that circuit equivalent approximately. So, I have z by 2 z by 2 I connect the load at the receiving end as usual and this draws a current I r it draws a current I r okay. and in this section it is I s. So, this is a simple model everything is lumped everything is lumped. Now, let us see how to draw the phasor diagram. So, I told you do not memorize the phasor diagram, do not ever memorize phasor diagrams. Let us draw it step by step. Again, as before, I start with Vr as the reference. So, first to draw Vr, always whenever you draw phasor diagrams, you have to draw the reference phasor first. So, this is Vr okay. and load loads are all lagging loads. So, I draw I r O a is V r. So, first draw V r and then O b I r not to scale I am only going to derive equations. So, so I am done with I r. So, I have the drop in this first section. So, here it will be I r into r by 2 and I r into x by 2. So, the first drop the resistive drop you can see A c is in phase with I r this is in phase with I r. So, what do I have I r into r by 2 half of it this is half here half here and then the drop in the reactor inductance of the line will lead. So, this is I r into x by 2. So, the sum of this will give me the voltage at d this is point d let us say here. So, O d, O d is this value what is this V c here. Okay. 
Next I need to find I s, I s is sum of I r and I c. So, I have I r, now I need to figure out I c. What is the voltage across C? Look at the circuit, the voltage across C is V c. So, V c is O d. So, I c will lead the voltage across C by 90 degrees. So, here you have V c. So, you draw I c 90 degrees to that. I c 90 degrees to that. Okay. So, the sum of these two currents I r and I c will give you I s. So, here I have I s. This is I c and this is I r. I r, I r plus I c is I s. So, this is I s sending end current here. Now, I need the drops in these two sections. So, this is I s. So, the resistive drop is in phase with it I s into r by 2. The inductive drop is leading by 90 degrees I s into x by 2 I get V s. Just erase out all this. Okay. So, now we are done. So, let us quickly see again how to do the phasor diagram, plot V r, plot I r, I r is lagging. Then I r into r by 2 A c is the drop in the first section of the resistor, leading that is I r into x by 2. Then I have O d which is equal to V c, I c will lead V c by 90 degrees, V c plus I r is I s. Now, in the Sending end section, I have I s r by 2 in phase with I s and I s x by 2 leading it by 90 degrees and I have V s. So, we have the full phasor diagram, clear. So, now what are all the equations you need? Very simple, V c, V c is V r plus this drop and V s is V c plus this drop and I s is I c plus I r. That is all the equations you have. It is a very simple from a circuit perspective. So, it is again redrawn here for you for your benefit. So, V c is equal to V r plus I r into z by 2, z is here r by 2 plus j x by 2. Okay. So, this whole thing this is z by 2. this is z by 2. So, I am splitting the impedance into two halves. Now, I c, I c is V c into y, the current is the voltage into the admittance. So, V c I already have the expression y into V r plus I r z by 2, I s is equal to I r plus I c that is at this node you write the K C L I s is I r plus I c, I r plus I c I have the expression y v r plus y z by 2 into I r. I collect the terms of v r and I r. So, I have I s is equal to y v r plus 1 plus y z by 2 I r. Got it? Now, do you remember the generalized circuit equation? What was the generalized, generalized circuit equation? I s is equal to C v r plus d i r. This is the generalized equation and this is the equation for this model. So, by comparing the two you can see C is equal to y and D is equal to 1 plus y z by 2. C is equal to y and D is equal to 1 plus y z by 2. So, I have got two of the generalized circuit constants. Next, I need to find out A and B. So, now let us come to V s. V s is V c plus I s into z by 2, this is again z by 2. So, V s is V c plus I s into z by 2, V c we already got the expression V c is V r plus I r into z by 2, 
this is the expression for is what we derived into z by 2. Please all of you write it by yourself. It is just simple substitution, no great mathematics involved. So, now again we will collect like terms. So, we are into 1 plus y z by 2 plus i r here you have a z by 2 and here you have a z by 2 another z by 2 and here you have y z squared by 4. Now you see what is the generalized circuit equation? V s is equal to a v r a v r plus b i r. A V R. So, A is 1 plus Y Z by 2 dimensionless because Y and Z have opposite dimensions and B is Z into 1 plus Y Z by 4. It is got the dimension of ohms. We are right, we have already seen that. B has the dimension of ohms. So, we have derived the generalized circuit constants for the T model. Clear? So, you know A B C D. And using this, you can find out the sending end voltage, sending end current because you know Vs Is is equal to the matrix ABCD into Vr IR. So, once you know how to calculate A and B ABCD, you see ABCD is only dependent on the network, not on the voltages and currents. Do you see that? Just see here. It depends only on Y and Z. A and B also depends only on Y and Z. So, once you have a line in place A, B, C, D are defined clear and once you know the receiving end voltage and current you can easily find out the sending end voltage and current and remember you have to deal with complex numbers all are complex because these are all phasor relationships ok all these are phasor relationships. So, you have to you do it with the angles. Regulation. There are two ways you can define the regulation, either you can do V s minus V r by r or I told you, you can also say the no load voltage minus the full load voltage divided by the full load voltage into 100, both any, any of them you can use. They may give you slightly different answers because your modeling has some approximations, but it would not be too different, it is ok, you can use either of them. And losses, what are the losses? Just see here, see this circuit. The current here is I r ok. So, I r squared into r by 2 in this section and the current in this resistor is I s. Therefore, the loss will be equal to I r squared into r by 2 plus I s squared into r by 2. Once you know the losses, you can calculate the efficiency as output power by output power plus losses into 100. Got it? So, what have we done? I have a medium line and unlike the short line, I cannot neglect the capacitance. So, I have used one circuit model of the capacit of the line, which I called as the T model, where I have lumped the entire capacitance of the line in the center, in the middle of the line and the impedance is divided into two sections. The only problem with this is an additional node you are introducing in the center ok. So, now let us take an example, how do I apply these equations and solve. A three phase 200 kilometer line is delivering a load of 100 megawatts 0.8 Pf, it is not lace, it is lags at 220 kV. The conductor resistance, so here you see the data is given in a slightly different way 0.1 ohms per kilometer, this is more standard. And reactance is 0.3 ohms per kilometer. And the line charging admittance, that is due to the capacitance of the line, is 3 into 10 to the power of minus 6 mohs per kilometer. So, instead of 
uh, giving you the capacitance value directly the admittance itself is given this is again a standard practice. So, calculate the ABCD parameters the sending and voltage power factor regulation efficiency etcetera using the T model. So, again let us be clear 200 kilometers is a medium line. So, I cannot neglect the capacitance of the line number one. Number two you have to realize 100 megawatts is what power it is the receiving end power. 0.8 pf is the receiving end power factor 220 kV is the receiving end voltage and I want to draw your attention to the fact that you know you should have noticed it even earlier the reactance will be 3 to 5 times more than the resistance it can be even higher ok. So, the greater the ratio better is the performance. So, now we have everything in place let us solve for the parameters. So, I have R is 0.1 into 200 because 200 kilometers and it is 0.1 ohms per kilometer. So, 0.1 into 200 is 20 ohms x is 60 ohms. So, z is 20 plus j 60 ohms and y is given to you 3 into 10 to the power of minus 6 per kilometer into 200 that will give you the number you have to put the j because I told you z y are all complex numbers it is the admittance. So, if you just write 6 into 10 to the power of minus 4 it will be wrong it is j capacitive susceptance is positive why because x c is 1 by c omega and z only to due to the capacitor will be minus j x c minus j x c. Therefore, the admittance due to a capacitor will be 1 by minus j x c which is j c omega this is fundamental ok very very elementary. So, the capacitance admittance is positive plus j. So, y is equal to j 6 into 10 to the power of minus 4 moles. Now, we already have the formula we have derived the formula for the generalized constants. So, a is equal to 1 plus y z by 2 1 plus y z by 2. So, when you are dealing with complex numbers please be careful about the calculations anyway all your modern calculators are very simple to use learn how to use it if you have already not done so. So, I get a is this notice that a is a complex number it has a magnitude and it has an angle. Next b is z into 1 plus y z by 4 you can calculate and now again you see it is a complex number and now do not say what is this complex ohms I know the resistance uh, is some 10 ohms I know it is positive what is the meaning of a complex that ohm unit is because of the dimension it is a ratio of a voltage and a current. So, it will have the dimension of ohms. So, it can still be a complex number it can still be a complex number. Next I have c is equal to y and d is equal to a symmetrical network you do not have to calculate a is equal to d you know that in a b c d networks. So, simple you calculated a b c d then very easy let b v r be the reference. So, v r is 220 by root 3 y I want the line to neutral voltage. So, 127 kV per phase i r is 100 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by 3 because I need the per phase power into voltage. So, it is 328 amperes 328 what is the power let us see yeah the power is 100 megawatts fine. 
So, the power is 100 megawatts, I have expressed the power here in kilowatts by multiplying by 10 to the power of 3. If you multiply it by 10 to the power of 6, it will become watts. So, this numerator is in kilowatts and this is in kilovolts, so that will get cancelled and you will get 328 amperes. So, I have I r is equal to 328 at an angle of minus 36.86 degrees. Then V s is A V r plus B i r, all these are only calculations, nothing. You can do it and check it and see whether I am right or I have made a mistake. So, you know A, you know B, you know V r, you know I r. Only thing is be sure that V r and I r you represent the phasors. So, VR is 127 kV at an angle of 0 degrees and IR is 328 at an angle of minus 36.6 degrees. So, be careful about that. So, I get the value of VS. VS is 142.13 at an angle of 5.05 degrees. Once you know this, sending end voltage magnitude I have. So, the line voltage will be root 3 times, so 246. 0.176 kV. Similarly, IS is CVR plus DIR. I know C, I know VR, I know D, I know IR. Simple arithmetic. As I said, when you have complex numbers, do your calculations carefully. So, I get IS. I have got VS, I have got IS. What is VS? VS is at an angle of 5.05 degrees with respect to VR. That means, it leads VR by 5.05 degrees. And IS is at an angle of minus 24 degrees with respect to VR. So, it lags VR by 24 degrees, not VS. It lags VR by 24 degrees. So, the net angle between them will be 29.05. The angle between VS and IS. Okay. So, the sending end power factor is cos phi S that is 0.874 lag. Rest of things are simple. The regulation is V s minus V r by V r into 100. You get 11.91. You see it has deteriorated. For short lines, we got 1 percent to 2 percent, 3 percent. Now, the drop is 11, 11 percent, which is high. And we can calculate the no load receiving end voltage and the regulation. So, we will come and revisit this again in the next session. Thank you.